So Sutra 5 reads, Mental modifications are fivefold. They may cause pain or pleasure according to prevailing circumstances that allow their effects to be actualized. You know, the conditioning you have in your mind can cause you problems or it can make you be happy. Um, the thing that, that, that allows those to express are the situations you're in. And so yoga practice also, in regards to life, has to do with eliminating things which cause you problems. So part of yoga practice is learning to get the self-knowledge so that you can interact with the world, you can manage your states of consciousness um, so that they no longer push you around. You rise above them. Um, one thing to note, when you're meditating, if you see all these things and you're distracted by feelings, thoughts, emotions, memories, what you can do is bring your attention up to the seventh chakra, the crown of the head, but also the spiritual eye. And when you do that, you, you do whatever technique you've got. But you keep your attention up here, as if you were looking out, so if my eyes are closed, it says, I'm looking out into the distance, not up, so I'm straining, but just out into the distance, and feeling like I'm, I'm just flowing out of my sixth chakra here. And by doing that, in yoga philosophy, they say this is the control center for the body. Um, this is the gate, they call it, uh, like the, you do yoni mudra, which is a practice where you meditate and you go through the spiritual eye. That's the, the birth canal from which you wake up, okay? Um, and from a physical standpoint, when you bring your attention up here, you stimulate the frontal lobes of your brain, which is influencing concentration, optimism, happiness, all these things you need to meditate alertly, okay? When you bring your attention up here to the seventh chakra, um, from a neurological standpoint, when these areas are stimulated or when attention is brought to you for a sustained period of time, um, people experience a sense of boundlessness. So beyond the body, merging with this infinite consciousness. It's good to keep your attention up in the higher chakras when you meditate, to rise above these mental conditions. Okay. Number five reads, mental modifications are fivefold. They may cause pain or pleasure according to the prevailing circumstances that allow their effects to be actualized. What are the five? The five, yeah, that moves on to number six. Oh, that's number six. Yeah, number six, okay. So we'll go ahead and move on to number six then. So number six reads, the five kinds of transformation that modify mind and awareness are the processes that occur when valid knowledge is acquired, illusions, delusions, sleep, and memory. The five kinds of transformations that modify mind and awareness are the processes that occur when valid knowledge is acquired, illusion, delusions, sleep, and memory. So these are all the things that get in the way, or can get in the way, of you experiencing this infinite stillness within you. Okay? The processes that occur when valid knowledge is acquired, there's a process that's going on there. And a lot of people identify with this process. And there's always more valid knowledge, because within this existence, this physical world, it, it's infinite. There will always be something more, something new to learn, something else to have. Okay. The next one is illusion. So illusions are perceiving things that aren't there. Your state is kind of projecting, it's creating a screen, so whatever you see is based on your level of awareness. So one of the things to transcend is whenever you go into an environment, whenever you look at the world, and you remain in that seeing state, that seer state, you don't identify with what you think is going on. You just wait and see what's actually happening. And that takes practice. Um, because, for example, a lot of people, they try to interact with the world in the way they always interact with the world. And that's coming from their conditioning, their memories, their mind, their past habits and behaviors. So they might do something over and over and over again just because they know that's, that's one way to do it. They don't actually stop and take a breath and think, well, what would be a different way I could interact with this person or interact with, um, with life in general? Okay, That's one way to get beyond illusions. Number three is delusions. Um, this is just faulty information. So delusions are mental perversions that you have, but eventually as you experience this seeing awareness, you become, you become more aware of these, these habits that you have that don't make any sense in the world. It's more like superstition, okay? So it's getting beyond your superstitions, okay? 
Now sleep, this is a fun one. Um, yogis are known to not have to sleep very much. And the reason that is, is because once you experience this higher level of functioning, this superconscious state, which is above the mind, you're no longer wasting energy thinking all the time. Most people's minds are just going and going and going. Okay. So that's, that's one thing to know. The next thing, you can consciously rise above the need to sleep by, when you go to sleep, there's a practice, and I'll tell you about it here in a second. There's a practice that keeps you awake and aware as your body sleeps. Okay, so remember, your body does need rest. Okay, it needs to recharge itself, it needs to take care of uh, vital processes. But you can still stay alert and aware. When I first read The Power of Now, I actually bought the audio CDs, or I guess they were cassettes then, uh, the audio cassettes. And as I was listening to it, what I would do is, when I went to sleep at night, I would put it in my tape recorder, and I would listen. And all I would do is I would focus on his words, and I would listen to what he was saying, I would listen to the spaces between those words. And I found that as I did that, that my thoughts quit, my emotions ceased, and I was just there, like the words were coming in, and I was still experiencing things, but I was just there, okay? There was no identification with anything. And I found that every time I did that, I would, I would watch my body fall asleep. And I would also sometimes watch myself dream, but the whole night, I was just a point in space watching these things. So, you know, get Eckhart Tolle's book and do that. That's one way to, to overcome sleep. Um, 